Let's talk about the general approach used to perform syndrome decoding. By way of review, remember our NK block encoder used a generator matrix G to convert a message into a code word. As it passes through the channel, one or more, or hopefully none, but some bit errors are likely to get introduced, and so we, we call the specific error pattern the error vector. This produces the received code word Y. So if there are no transmission errors, then Y would be equal to X. So our purpose then is to figure out, well, what do we do with the received code word to try to recover our best estimate of the original message? Now recall that the generator matrix is a concatenation of the identity matrix and the parity matrix. That's, that's P. Now the corresponding matrix for our decoder is the parity check matrix. Triangle over equals means defined as. So the parity check matrix is actually defined as the P matrix, so it's the exact same one from the generator matrix, stacked on top of the identity matrix, but in this case the identity matrix is Q by Q. So overall the H transpose matrix is N by K. Excuse me, N by Q. Let's make sure we get that correct. Now, a very important property of H transpose has to do with the product of the code word and the trans transpose of H. It turns out that this is always a zero vector. So the, the uh, X being a valid code word multiplied by our parity check matrix is zero. Again, the, the, the key point here is that X must be one of our valid code words. So this becomes the basis of error detection because if the received code word differs from X, well, this product is going to be non-zero. That is, if it's an invalid code word. So let's define this product X times H transpose as a syndrome. And now specifically, I want to look at the uh, received code word multiplied by this parity check matrix. So this is a one by N vector. Transpose of H is N by Q. Our syndrome then is a one by Q vector. And our syndrome then is an indicator about whether or not an error has occurred. And also, it turns out, gives us some um, ideas about how you might even be able to go about correcting certain classes of errors in Y. Now, let's consider our received code word as being the original code word that was transmitted plus the error vector that was introduced by the channel. Now, in this case, plus means modulo two addition, by the way. So we say that it would be X times H transpose plus the received, back up here, I'm sorry, plus the uh, error vector times H transpose. We already know that X H transpose is zero because X is supposed to be a valid code word that was transmitted. So the interesting thing about this syndrome is that the value is exclusively a property of the error vector. Depends only on the error pattern. Doesn't have anything to do with the particular arrangement of your code bits. So that's kind of helpful. Now suppose the syndrome is in fact zero. Well, there's actually two possible interpretations for this result. One is we could say that no transmission errors occurred. And that would correspond to a zero error vector. The second interpretation is that some sort of undetectable error occurred. Now why is it undetectable? Well, if you can't tell the difference between no transmission error and uh, something that's somehow flipped X into a valid code word, 
then there's nothing you can do about it. It's undetectable. Whenever S is not equal to zero, then we say that an error has in fact been detected. Again, not all errors can possibly be detected, but, but certain, certain error types can. Well, let's find out how we might be able to consider doing error correction. Again, let's kind of keep straight the various dimensions of these vectors. Since our syndrome is 1 by k, we say that there's actually 2 to the q possible syndromes. For example, if the syndrome was 3 bits wide, we know that there's 2 to the 3, or 8 possible arrangements of 1s and zeros. Now, for n bits in our code word, we would say that there's actually 2 to the n possible error patterns. Again, returning to the specific example of q equals 3 check bits, we know that leads to a 7-4 Hamming code, leading to 4 message bits and n code word bits. This says that we have 8 distinct syndrome patterns, but we have 128 distinct error patterns. So right away we can see that there's many more error patterns than we have syndrome patterns. In fact, 16 different error patterns all produce the same syndrome. So the syndrome gives us some information, but it, it loses uh, the, the, the necessary information that would allow us to de correct any possible error. All right, so if not all errors can be corrected, which ones ought we to look at? Well, we call this maximum likelihood decoding. We, we think of it this way. Zero errors in a well-designed system should be considered most likely. And then after that, a single bit error in a code word would be the next most likely. So what we're going to do is associate each possible syndrome with its most likely error pattern. And we'll use that as our basis for implementing a correction. So the decoding process begins with the received code word Y, which is the transmitted code word plus the error. We calculate its syndrome S, convert that syndrome, which is a binary pattern, into a numerical equivalent. You can interpret it as an unsigned integer to serve as an index into a table of air patterns. I'll call this E hat since this is our best guess as to the air pattern associated with each different syndrome. If we then modulo 2 add this uh, best guess air pattern to our received code word, that gives us our best guess at the corrected value. So modulo 2 addition would also be the same thing as an exclusive OR gate. And again, the, the exclusive OR gate here would be operating in a bitwise or vectorized fashion. And that produces our corrected code word. Now another thing that you might want to consider is how to rem actually remove the check bits from our corrected code word. So I'll say m hat is our best estimate of the original transmitted message. If we do an array multiplication between x hat and a specially designed matrix here, which is the identity matrix stacked on top of the zero matrix. Let's try to get our dimensionality straight here again. Looks like this matrix needs to be n by k. So the identity matrix picks off the message portion and the zero po uh, portion of the matrix essentially eliminates the check bits and we're left with a one by k vector result. Okay, let's take a quick look at starting an example that I'd like you to, to continue as, as part of this project. 
Supposing we have some specific values for the generator matrix, a specific message, and a specific code word. I'd like you to find the parity check matrix and then also calculate the syndrome for three possible received code words and then discuss your results.